update! And it's been another week. Today we are going to talk about closed captions on YouTube. There are several ways you can go about this, and having gone through and used a variety of methods to closed caption all of the episodes of Pops on YouTube, I thought I would tell you about some of them in case you're not familiar with it. They also say that having your content closed captioned serves as a whole other set of tags for when people are searching for your videos, so that's nice. So. Closed captioning. There are a couple ways you can do it. Let's say that you have a video that was not scripted. For this example, I'm going to use a video on the channel that was never scripted, Pops Update 68. So let's click on Update 68. Click on underneath the video. Whatever video it is has to be your own video currently. I think people are going to start to be able to closed caption other people's videos. I believe I heard something about that coming down the VidCon pipeline. Anyway, you go and you click on the double C underneath the video and then it takes you to this page over here and it gives you some options and you can click on English if you're going to create English subtitles I'm not trying to be presumptuous create whatever language subtitles you want YouTube creates an automatic set of captions and there are plenty of caption fail videos where we all laugh about what awful captions uh, are made for YouTube videos and, like nonsense captions and everything you can edit those so you click on the ones that have been automatically created and it takes you to this screen right here and then you pop in and edit what the words are supposed to be, then underneath that you can adjust the timing of them. Just pull on these little bars here and you can place where the captions are supposed to be in order. And then save and publish and boom. That's one way to do it. Another method, some other video on my channel that's not been subtitled, let's use Twisted Thicket. Click on it, get it up, get the double CC, click. What kind of subtitles do you want to create for this? I want to create English and then it gives you these three options here. Upload a file, I've tried that. I don't find it very effective. Transcribe and set timings or create new subtitles or CC. The creating new subtitles one uh, it works pretty much the same way as the transcribe and set timings, but I like the transcribe and set timings because it's just kind of an easier way to go. So let's click on that one for Twisted Thicket. Do you just listen and you type in as things happen? You type it up and then leave a space and then type up the next thing that's said and then leave a space, type in the next thing that's said but when you start typing it pauses, it pauses the video and you type and then you stop typing and it starts the video again, you listen, type at the end of it you just press on set timings and then it goes through and it sets the timings and then you go through after it does that and adjust like we did in the last example, you just adjust the time frame on them that's how I did all the subtitles on episodes 1 through 7 and it took a long time but it's fairly accurate and you can really get the timings in. One thing I definitely like to do, people don't always think about, is there are a lot of sound things that matter, like footsteps approaching or knock at the door or whatever. And stage directions are really important if they motivate the characters and you can't hear them. So I always include those. Let's say you uh, have a script. This is the way I did episode 8 because I had already written out everything once. I didn't want to type it all up again in such a short amount of time. We'll use Twisted Thicket again for this one. So you go to the Twisted Thicket script, highlight it all, copy it all, open up Word, paste it in there, and then just delete everything but the dialogue. And the cool thing too about doing this with things that have already been formatted by a screenwriting software, be it Celtics or Screenwriter 2000 or Final Draft or whatever, the margins on the dialogue are already in good chunks for subtitles, in my opinion. So you just kind of go through two lines at a time, make sure there's no more than two lines, otherwise the subtitles will break up in an inconvenient way. Get the dialogue all sorted how you want, make sure there's spaces in between each bit, copy it, go back into Twisted Thicket, English subtitles, I still do transcribe and set timings, and then I just paste it all in there. But you see, it's in blocks now. It's in already dialogue-y blocks. Just two lines, space, next line or two. You'll get to know how you want to break up your subtitles and make sure thoughts stay complete and things like that. Click set timings, pop back in a little bit, and then you just go back underneath the screen and move all the timings to make sure that things are being said in the timing they're supposed to, in the pace of the video. And as the video maker, I think you're the best person to make that choice. And then, of course, adding in any knocks on doors. Anything that motivates the character or action, I think, should still be included in the sounds list. Put that in some brackets. Good to go. Save. Publish. Go check it out. You can just go back to the main page, click on the subtitles that everybody has, not just the creator, right on the bottom right side of the screen, and you can see that they're active. And now Twisted Thicket is captioned as well, thanks to this update. <laughs> um, this week's question... Alright, guys, this is a big one. I need your help. I need your opinion 
on something. Back in like 2000, 2001, 14-ish years ago, there was this contest created called Project Greenlight. Project Greenlight was amazing. Amateur screenwriters sent in their scripts to be considered to be made into an actual feature film produced by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and it was great. And I submitted mine, didn't make it through the first rounds before I knew much about structure, although I got very good comments back on my dialogue and characters, which was very nice. It was very encouraging. Went away for a long time. It's also a reality show. They followed the first timer as they went through and, and made their first movie. It was compelling. I thought it was compelling anyway, uh, but I'm into all this stuff. A couple weeks ago, it's announced. Boom! Project Greenlight is coming back. Entries start July 24th and go until the 8th. They already have an approved script that they want to make a feature film of, and they're looking for a director. Submit your one to three minute short. I do not have a concise one to three minute short. That is my question. I want to submit to Project Greenlight. I was thinking of submitting a scene from Pops. Some scene that I think is indicative of the kind of thing that I do, my tone, the way I deal with the camera, all of that. I was thinking about this scene from episode eight. Gentlemen. It starts here, includes this whole section, all of this, ends here. That is just under three minutes, but it's not like beginning, ending, short film in under three minutes. And so I was going through the rules and I saw this. You can submit a section from something else, but it needs to be able to stand on its own. My question to you is, do you think that scene stands on its own as an example of my directing, or should I create a short one to three minute film uh, between now and the end of entries in the contest? Which do you think I should go with? Let me know in the comments and I will talk to you next week. That's the Pops logo, as is this. Thank you guys, and I will see you next week.